What's up, Internet? Today, we are continuing with some aesthetic modifications for the Hayabusa. We got more Moto Composites. I think it's called Moto Composites. There goes that sponsorship deal again. Um, Moto Composites carbon fiber for the sides. We're going to vinyl wrap more gray. Get rid of this chrome swish thingy. And then we will vinyl wrap the gold piece on the hump and then we've got a carbon fiber piece for the front and there'll be no more orange on the bike now as i say that don't think that i hate the orange i don't hate it it's fine it looks good but i like the carbon better with the vinyl we'll see <laughs> So believe it or not, the hump is four separate pieces. So here's the gold piece. Here's um, this piece that kind of sits in there like that. To get this out, you have on the edge these little tabs and essentially they fit inside and then this little lip right here kind of um, goes on the inside and keeps it from coming out. So you just kind of bend this this way and it pops through the hole right here and then the rest of it just kind of falls out at that point. There's, I think, five screws. One, two, three, four, five. So yeah, five screws right here. All the screws are the same. Here's all the other screws for the other pieces. You don't really need to worry about which one went where. They're all the same. They're all the same length. They're, they're, they're all exactly the same. So here's the other two pieces, this piece and this piece. So four pieces. Who would have thunk it? I think the best way to wrap this is to start on the front and then go over the top and the sides like so. Um, we don't necessarily need to wrap this piece here in the center because you're not going to see any of that. It should all be covered by this piece right here. But um, we do need to come over these edge all the way around here and here. And I think like this is definitely going to be like a contention point. The wrap is going to want to wrinkle. So if we start like back here and then try and come over this way, um, this area here is going to give you crap. These bends aren't too bad, but certainly right here, it's going to be really, really difficult. So I think if we start on this side and then go over the top and over the sides and whatnot, and don't even really need to worry about the bottom. I mean, it can be ugly down here. Nobody's going to see it as far as like wrinkles and stuff. But I think that'll make this part easier. At least that's my thought. So that's what we're going to do. I always suck at the trim piece. So many times I have trimmed it too short. And then you have things exposed that you never intended to be exposed or visible. You need to mock things up a little bit more. So that happens less and I hope I don't have to redo this piece. Where does this screw go? Basically, I didn't trim. I should have took the wrap a little bit farther back underneath this piece here. Totally should have taken that back a little bit farther. Plus, being a curve like this, in the video you saw me using my fingers, the only downside to that is, I mean, a, a couple of downsides. One, any kind of grease or oils you have on your hands um, can make that difficult. But also your fingernails is the big one. I've cut vinyl by pressing in and my fingernail actually pressing into the vinyl, which was unintentional. But, eh. It's so close, like if I wanted it perfect, I'd probably take it apart again and do this piece again and just take it farther back, but I just don't feel like it. We're not trying to sell this. <laughs> now that that piece is done back on the bike, man, I really, really, really like it a lot more. I think it really kind of just goes with the stripe on top. Get another stripe on top of the gas tank cover. But next, next we're pulling off this side fairing. Replace the orange with another carbon fiber bit from Moto Composites. We'll, uh, we'll vine and wrap this. We'll see how that goes.
there are a whole bunch of these body pins. There's some large ones, and this is one of the large ones, and there's some small ones, but basically, um, you, for the large ones, you have these little slits in here, and they probably make a tool for this, but if they get stuck, you can actually, there's a slit on this side, and then there's a slit on the opposing side. It's basically, you, you stick in a screwdriver here and kind of pry it up, push it up one way or the other but this one was kind of um, stubborn so I ended up using two at the same time one on this side and then one on this side and um, there you can see the slit there pretty good but anyway just if you don't have the special tool which I don't you can use two screwdrivers at the same time and just pry it up um, the small ones have a little button in the center and so you press them in and then you can pull them out of the body these ones you have to pull the center out and then even then sometimes the main part of it stays in and you got to pry to get that out as well but it is what it is okay to get this uh, side fairing off there's obviously the screw here screw here there's a whole bunch of body pins is what i call them um, up inside here is a couple here and there there's a big one here on the bottom um, those are all pretty obvious I used to in my videos at once upon a time, at least once, because this is not the first time I've taken the fairings off, I used to tell people to take this screw out. You don't need to take that out. You can actually just lift this right, this grommet right here sits over that. You just lift it up and off. So you can leave that screw in. Um, there's a couple of push pins for this panel that sits here. Um, and there's one screw on top. I think I took that on or took that off on video. And then there's like two push pins in here. I had to turn the handlebars to really get to them. Um, and then what's less obvious is you have one screw here. You don't need to take all these screws out. I don't believe we'll find out in a second, but there's one screw down in here. So you can see that screw screws in there. There's a push pin right here for this little piece, right? Otherwise then you'd have to take these two screws off because this piece right here is separate from the rest of the fairing. Um, but if you take this push pin out, you leave these screws in. And then I think the last screw holding it on is this one right here. I don't know. Let's see if we can get some light in there. There we go. Stupid mirror. Um, and now you see my face. Ugh. Oh, get out of there. So we're going to take that screw off, and I think that's the last bit. All right, here we are, fairing off of the motorcycle. So didn't even have to take the seat off. This piece here just kind of sticks to these two pieces of Velcro and just sits right up underneath the seat. So you have enough clearance. You don't even need to take the seat off. Again, leave that screw in, lift the fairing over the top of it, pull it away from the bike. So I was correct with the screws. Those, those last two screws, there's one here, there's one here, and then the two screws here um, that sit on, I don't know, it's just that piece that attaches. We'll go look at the fairing here in a second. What I want to say was, there's um, a hole here, and there's a piece on the fairing that hooks into that hole. And then to get it off, you kind of have to slide it back. There's a couple of places, little notches right here, so it slides into that. So if you slide it back a little bit, then you can pull it away from the bike. There's one up here, one right here. Um, I guess I didn't need to take these push pins out because all of this plastic stuff here could have stayed just the way it was but no big deal. There's just push pins that go in and out pretty quick. So here's that notch I was talking about. Um, I need to lay something down on the ground to protect them. So we got one screw here, one screw here, and then a bunch of little thingamabobs. So these probably have to pull back. Anyway, it should come up. And then we've got one screw here for the chromed out swishy thing. Maybe some screws over there. I don't know. Probably looks like we'll probably might have to take this piece off and separate it from this piece in order to get the chrome swish thing. That shouldn't be too hard to wrap.
Here's the finished product. Before I put this on, I wanted to show you something I ran into. So these little guys have a tab right here. You press this down and then you press it out that way. And then to reinstall, it's just a reverse. You just push them in. Once the tab clears this piece here, which is attached to the fairing, the tab pops up and kind of locks it in and holds it in. There were a couple that were really hard to get on. I think maybe the carbon fiber piece was a little bit too high. And I broke this one, trying to press it in. Um, you got one, two, three, four, five. So one, two, three, four, five of these. Plus you have these little hooks here. And then you've got two screws, one here, one here. So there's a lot holding this thing in. It's not going anywhere. But I did have a couple of them. I think this one was also really high and hard to get back in. Maybe it was this one. A couple of them were. This was definitely one of them because I broke the tab on the fairing side trying to get it squeezed in there. It just wasn't happening. But what you can do is take the back side of some pliers. Take the back side of pliers and you can kind of just press it in this way. Don't try and like crimp them. Don't try and crimp them like that. Use the flat side and just press them in. It's a little bit difficult with your thumb because they're not very big. It kind of hurts a little bit. So using these, you can press them in pretty good. So anyway, just want to show you that. So when we put this fairing back on, you want to make sure that you get this guy lined up with this hole here on the frame, this grommet. And then all the little hooks that line up in uh, on the, the receiving side of the bike where we're gonna put the reinstall the fairing in. So let's get to it. And just like that, this video is done. So I'm pretty pumped with the way this came out. I think with this gray kind of ties in the back of the bike, got the carbon, the carbon. I've never been a huge fan of like all carbon bikes. I like just touches of carbon here and there with the gray vinyl wrap. Looks pretty nice. I'm digging it. It's getting, it's, it's like, it's growing a little bit more on me. At first when I had just did the little like tail section, not even the orange bit on the hump, just the tail section, I was kind of like, mm, mm, I'm not so sure about this. Um, but now that I've got the hump wrapped and I've got these chrome swish things <laughs> wrapped in the gray vinyl with the carbon, oh man, it's really, really come together nicely, I think. So it's growing on me for sure. And once again, the carbon the carbon composite pieces, fit and finish, damn near perfection. We only had a couple of issues on the back side. I showed you those hooks earlier. Um, There's a couple of those where maybe the carbon fiber is a little bit too high, and I just had a hard time getting one of those back in. Um, two of them, I think, were, were a bit troublesome. But we got one in, we broke the other one, no big deal. Plenty of things holding that carbon piece on, so I'm not really worried about that. Um, I think that's it, man. So we still need to do the front piece. I'm gonna do a different video for that. And I still need to do the right side fairing. So but that's just rinse and repeat. I'm not gonna do that on the video. It's the same exact process as the left side fairing. We saw that, so we're good to go, I think. All right, guys, you know what to do. Keep it upside down. We'll see you in the next video. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.